Welcome, folks. I'm so glad that you're able to be here. Um, thank you for coming, and thank you for celebrating with us. Uh, this has been a project in the making, and uh, we're certainly excited that it's where it's at now. And I think if you talk, when you talk to our faculty uh, in their particular labs or classrooms, you will sense their excitement as well. Uh, they are very pleased, and I will tell you that uh, from the very beginning of, of this project, faculty have been involved with helping us design and with all their inputs and their ideas uh, we've been able to um, really develop something special for our campus here in Keokuk. And uh, so I, as we get started I just want to introduce a few people to you and uh, some of those folks are not here yet but uh, if they come then uh, we'll step in and wave. Uh, sorry for the uh, warmth of the room. I see a lot of Fanning going on. So, first of all, our board of trustees, starting with Janet Pfeiffer Friends, who is the chair of our board, and wouldn't you know, she's the chair of the board, she's from Keokuk, and she just happens to be here tonight. She'll give a few remarks. So, uh, Janet Pfeiffer Friends, uh, the vice chair is Lanny Hilliard, he's from Minneapolis, and then uh, Moody Nabolsi from Fort Madison, Chris Prowitz from Mount Pleasant, and Jeff. Eland is not with us here tonight in person, but he will be in the board meeting on the telephone. So he is from the Burlington area. So we're so pleased that our board are here, our board members are here. We do have uh, a board meeting after all of this, so uh, we're going to try to keep things moving along. Not that none of this is not important, but we do have other business to take care of as well. We're trying to be uh, efficient in our efforts to, uh, to have this program. Uh, the next person I'd like to introduce, and he will be making a few comments in just a little bit, the, the Honorable Mayor Tom Richardson from Keokuk. And then up front here is Shelley Altman. Uh, she's with the Chamber. She'll be saying something a little bit later as well. Representative Kurtz in the back here, and we're so thankful that he's able to be here. And thank you, uh, Mr. Representative. Uh, and, and a very special uh, young man who's with us. His name is uh, Jim Bowles. <laughs> Can I say that right yeah. 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 So thank you, Karen, for being here. Um, also, um, we have lots of community, community members here. I'm so thankful for that as well. But coming through from Hawkeye Community College, which I think is probably yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> the longest, the longest drive, um, is the president of Hawkeye Community College, Dr. Todd Holcomb and uh, his right-hand person, uh, Mr. Terry Flint. So they're right here. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming. They have some things they're checking out as it relates to how we did our building, and uh, so they'll, they'll be interested to see how things were put together and uh, whether or not they'll go in that same direction because they'd like to do something along that line. So we welcome those gentlemen as well. Um, so supposed to be drive up, uh, Joining us shortly is uh, Christine Barnes from Newcomb Public Schools. And I don't see her here yet. Who is she here? She won't see her. Okay, and then also Pat Cohen indicated that he was coming. He's the superintendent at Burlington. Um, I don't see him as well. Wood Stortzum is here. He's a U.S. Bank president of Burlington. And so Wood and his lovely wife Donna. Thank you for coming. Um, Paul Ahrens from DLR is here, and uh, he's the guy that kind of makes everything happen and keeps us on track, so I uh, keep these guys and, and the, the contractors moving forward. So thank you for being here, Paul. And we have a number of administrators here, uh, in part because of the board meeting, but, uh, but beyond that we have uh, just their, their participation in today's program as well as the uh, Seeing, seeing for some, perhaps for the first time, this new facility. So we're excited about that. Of course, our faculty here. So if I could have all of our faculty just stand. 
I couldn't get the student into his seat. His crutches had no place to go. A wheelchair wouldn't fit underneath the lab desk. I kept going out of the room to find the seat. I was cramped. I was uncomfortable. that vintage in the images of the law again. Let's show, let me show you what can happen when the administration and the faculty work together as a team to create a safe, student-friendly approach. We walk together and we reflect on the innovations. Those instructions hanging down from the ceiling, we do the rooms are open, inviting, in brightly lighted. Every room has a designated built-in storage space, easily accessible to students to retrieve needed equipment. Movement within the room for students with mobility issues has been achieved. Sinks are located readily accessible to lab space and it's functional for small and large group use. The state of the art facility is phenomenal. Thank you, FCC donors and patrons. Without your support, Susie and her fellow students and professors would not have one of the best learning environments in the world. Join. Well, good, good afternoon. On behalf of myself and the city of Keokuk, we welcome you to the SEC Ribbon Cutting. Uh, just a little history here. You know, this is about building a dream, and the dream for Keokuk began in 1949 as a citizens committee was formed to consider establishing a two year college in Keokuk. The issue of founding a college was put to the voters in March of 1950 and by a large majority was passed, and the college opened as a part of the Keokuk Public Schools in September 1953 with 53 students. They were housed for the next 21 years throughout the, that time, and in 1966 it became Southeastern Community College, but they were hosted at the Keokuk Senior High School building. We've come a long way since then, obviously. <laughs> Taking from the uh, information from a publication called The First 12 Years Keokuk Community College, the article talks about the formation of, Ke of the Keokuk Community College. I'm just giving you a little history. In 1949 and 50, a citizens committee which included educators, business and industry, interested citizens, labor, and the Chamber of Commerce joined together to work towards establishing the Keokuk Community College and their bullet points for selling this idea to the Keokuk citizens were, one, provided educational opportunities for more people, which it surely did, raise income of citizens to promote more retail sales for the town, and it did, enhance the educational and cultural level of the community. So today, almost 70 years later, I find it very interesting and rewarding that volunteer citizens, labor and industry, and organizations including Chambers of Commerce is still supporting and promoting the growth of SCC. This was still a truly community project and a tri-state project. SCC has been a vital part of this community and a very important educational institution for many families, including my own. As an example, my sister in 1967 was a traditional student attending SCC Keokuk in the late 60s before transferring to the University of Iowa. My wife, Kathy, before she was my wife, started at SCC Keokuk out of high school as a traditional student, then came back after we were married to SCC as a non-traditional student and attained her art in degree at age 40. Our son was a traditional student at SCC before transferring to Iowa State. Our daughter also started as a traditional student on this campus, then transferred to Western Illinois, and then came back to attain her art in degree at SCC at 30 years of age. 
Um, I was the outcast there. <laughs> I went west. Mr. Nicker Adkins, you see his name around here, I think he was the dean, asked me to come play baseball for, uh, I, he coached me in high school and collegiate stuff. He said, I want you to come play baseball for SEC. I said, nah, I'm going to the University of Miami. Well, that's the year that, if I'd have been here, Bill Madlock was here. He goes on to play for the Pirates. And I'm doing this. One year later, the University of Montana, they cut the program for women's soccer. So, <laughs> so now we have four grandchildren who are considering furthering their education at SCC. My point is here is not about my family. We're not unique in this respect. My point is this community college has played a major educational role for generations of families. As, such as my family, I'm sure others that are here, and it tends today in families throughout this entire Tri-State area. So today we celebrate another exciting phase of SCC's important and evolving role in our Tri-State's educational opportunities for both the traditional and non-traditional students. So on behalf of myself and the community, we thank you, SCC staff, your board members, volunteers, supporters for your investment and commitment to the SCC Kiyoka campus. Thank you. Good afternoon. On behalf of the Keokuk Area Chamber of Commerce, um, Board of Directors, and the Keokuk Economic Development Corporation, I'd like to thank you guys for joining us today to celebrate Southeastern Community College's continued investment in the Keokuk campus. Um, while writing several iterations of this speech today, I don't know why it takes so long to write a two-minute speech. It does. <laughs> um, I kept on coming upon the word invest. And I'm not sure if you like me, I love a good thesaurus. I don't want to repeat my words, I always want to have some different words. So um, I kept on trying to find other words, and there wasn't just there wasn't anything that meant quite the same thing. So instead, I looked up "invest" in the Merriam-Webster dictionary. So the verb "invest" has three definitions. Definition one: to commit in parentheses money in order to earn a financial return. Definition two: to make use of future benefits or advantages. So for instance, she invested her time wisely. Three, to involve or engage, especially emotionally. They were deeply invested in their children. I felt relieved. These definitions are exactly what I needed. Um, over the past few years, SEC community members and businesses have invested over $5 million in infrastructure improvements in the Keokuk campus. According to a national report prepared on behalf of the American Association of Community Colleges, taxpayers save $6.80 for every dollar invested in a community college. If my math is correct, and the report, we are saving around $5.44 million with this $800,000 investment to renovate the science we call. Congratulations, everyone. <laughs> I question many people ask themselves, will investment in my education really pay off? It costs so much money, but also time. I want to tell the nursing students here, your investment in pursuing an education at SCC will cost you money. It will cost you time and sacrifice time with your family. However, this investment will allow you to get an education from a top-rated nursing program with access to the latest and greatest learning space and equipment. I'm telling you, if you invest your time wisely, you will reap future benefits and advantages. Now we get to the third definition to involve and engage emotionally. While this type of investment may not easily be quantified in dollars and hours, it is probably the investment that brings the most benefit to the future success of our community. Today, I want to thank SEC staff, students, and supporters for deeply investing in Kiyoka. I said earlier it's about the students and that's a slogan I use quite frequently around uh, various parts of our campus. We're going to hear from the students. So thank you, Doyle. First of all, I'll just say my speech is lacking some. I'm a nursing student. We had a test today, so I really <laughs> so everybody's has been great, but I promise I could have wrote better. But my name is Megan Doyle. This is my third year here at SCC, and I'm a proud member of the nursing program. 
We were told about the plan to remodel last semester and we were all excited but didn't know what to expect. From AMP and microbiology labs to PN simulation, we were supplied with what we needed. However, this year we have all the new up-to-date equipment and we are loving breaking it in. We could hear the construction this summer as we sat in pharmacology. Our teacher reminded us as we are building the dream, which is so fitting for our ladder program here at SCC. The day we were told we could peek at our new classroom, we were all like little kids on Christmas. We were all whispering to each other that we could go peek at it. It felt like a gift to us. In my opinion, it's one of the best gifts you can get. This room is where we will gain our education and nobody can take your education away from you. This room just proves how much our school cares about us, getting the best education we can get. We are overjoyed and joyed and so very appreciative of the investment in our education. We give our thanks through our loyalty to this college and our determination to do the absolute best we can do. Nothing motivates a person more than the new shiny toys to play with. <laughs> um, we, we are proud to be a part of this fine establishment who cares so deeply about us and today we give our appreciations and thanks to every single person involved. Now, to represent the faculty, because we have nursing and we have sciences, uh, it crosses over two different areas of the division. Uh, so I've asked uh, Dr. Janet Shepard, the Vice President for Academic Affairs, to come. Janet? Thank you. And good evening, um, administration, board members, faculty, staff, and especially our students, and also our community friends of SCC. We're glad that you were able to be here this afternoon while we have our ribbon cutting. And um, I just have a couple of things to say. So it's an exciting time for Southeastern Community College as we embark upon another academic year. And what an exciting time with the newly renovated labs, classrooms, administrative offices, and even the honor garden. So I am thrilled to be a part of that. I'm thrilled to serve SCC, as are many of our faculty and staff. One walk around campus, and I do invite you to walk around when we're finished here, you will find that the classrooms are modern, welcoming, and very inviting for our students that will come through our doors. All of this would not be possible without the skillful work of the DLR architects, Mike Pullman, and our construction manager, Paul Ahrens, and our general contractor, SG Construction, and our subcontractors, Winger, Wright Electric, IDA Painting. And so, on Fridays, it's my turn to come to the uh, Kiaka campus, at least I try every Friday. I don't always get down here every Friday, but I try. And so last Friday as I walked around and as I was in my office, I had some people stop in to visit. One of those, people, one of those individuals was Jenna Dunlap. She's the Assistant Professor for Speech and Communication. And she dropped in to chat for a moment and she commented that Keokuk students are like family to the faculty here at Keokuk. And she also said that the renovations help to show that we care about our students who they treat like family. Another person stopped in that day, Glenn Day, professor of math. And he mentioned how wonderful it is that the new lab and classrooms are ADA compliant. Now for a lot of you that might not mean a lot, but for us as an institution it means everything because we've been focused on becoming ADA compliant in our physical facilities, in our online classroom environment, in our textbooks that our faculty uh, choose and then also in the renovations that we've done and these renovations they enhance the concept and embrace the concept of universal design that not only helps students with disabilities but it helps all students later that day I walked to the library but on my way to the library I stopped at the cafeteria and if you didn't know they serve Starbucks there which is great and in the library, or excuse me, in the cafeteria was Amber, um, Russell Lambert, and she was sitting having a luncheon meeting with Callie Watson, who is our newest instructor for the nursing faculty. 
And Callie told me that one of the things she likes the most is the big wall that is a, I gotta get this right, an entire marker board that allows for interactive learning with the students. She also mentioned that students, such as CNA students, that travel back and forth between campuses now have the same facilities at the West Burlington that they have at Keokuk. So it's going to help, she believes, with test taking because they're using the same, uh, they're familiar with the same equipment. So she's very happy about that. So on behalf of academic affairs, the staff, and especially our qualified faculty, we would like to thank Dr. Ash for his vision and leadership, all of the board members for devoting their time and energy to serve SEC, Kevin Carr and his team for their expertise in overseeing the financing of this project, Brian Whittlesey and his team for managing the renovations, Chuck Chrisman and his team for the endless hours of IT support to make sure that everything works right, Carrie Bevins, the Keokuk staff, the Keokuk faculty for their patience during the renovations. I'm sure it was a little bit dusty here in the summer. And finally, but not least, Rex Widmer, Jay Roth, and Brian Wagner. For these individuals, uh, they have the ongoing maintenance and upkeep of the facilities to retain its beauty. So we're very thankful for that. So we are thankful and grateful that Southeastern Community College continues to fulfill its vision of being a leader in lifelong learning, embracing diversity, transforming lives, strengthening communities, and inspiring individuals to excellence. So thank you to everyone that played a part in this renovation and congratulations on the job well done. Thank you, Janice, Dr. Shepherd. Um, we really want to get you moving about and seeing things as well as eat uh, some of that uh, nice snacky food that's out there. So uh, with that, I just want to say thank you for coming.